Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's head to head comparison, we're going to take a look at the all new 2025 Toyota Camry and the 2025 Lexus ES350. Now since the Toyota Avalon is being discontinued, we now have the Lexus ES350 as a little bit more of the competitor towards the Camry being a little bit more upscale, a little bit more expensive as well versus the Toyota Camry. So let's start off with the pricing. For the Lexus ES350, these have a starting MSRP around $43,000. Well equipped like the model in front of us are going to be at closer to $48,000. For the Toyota Camry, there's a much bigger price difference. They start right around $28,000. And for the XSC model in front of us, closer to $44,000. So we do have a few thousand dollar difference between both of these trim levels here. But in general, the Lexus does cost more. Now underneath the hood for the ES350 is the naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6. This is paired to an 8 speed automatic, it pumps out 302 horsepower, 267 pound feet of torque. The 3.5 liter V6 is now gone for the 25 year model on the Camry. This is replaced with the 2.5 liter 4 cylinder hybrid. Paired to a CVT, pumps out 232 horsepower, 163 pound feet of torque. So if you miss that NA V6, you could either buy a 2024 Camry or you can go with the Lexus here. And then as far as zero to 60 times go, six and a half seconds, a little bit closer to seven seconds for the Camry. Well, let's work our way to the exterior styling now where we have a big difference. The Lexus has that hourglass design for the grill. The sensor is the logo itself there. There's also parking sensors up front, LEDs for all of the lighting. For the less expensive Camry, this gets a sensor right in the middle, but it also gains a forward-facing camera, which is nice. A little bit more sleeker of a design, I will say. Large in the lower section there. There's some trim accents, just like on the Lexus there, and then some nice lines that come down the hood. So a little bit more classy and stylish, a little bit more bold and aggressive for the Toyota there. And then for these particular models, we do have some nice wheels. I do like the wheels on this Camry a little bit better, with their almost body colored design there. But we have a nice setup for the Lexus with a two-tone design, a little bit more luxury focused. Both of these have indentions around the wheel arches there. We have power folding side mirrors for both. However, on this Camry, you get a camera on the side view mirror. There's only the turn signal for the Lexus there. The Camry also gets a full moonroof. Lexus has a sunroof up top. And then as far as their uh, side profiles go, they do have some similar angles and lines to them. You can tell that, of course, being Lexus and Toyota as the same brand, they do share a very, very similar shape. The Camry, however, has that two-tone look with the roof being finished off in gloss black. So for their styling, Lexus is a little bit larger, a little bit more sleeker. We do have that line running through the door handles for the Camry though. But as we work our way to the back, there's a trunk mounted spoiler, backup camera, all the sensors, LED lights, dual exhaust over on that passenger side there. And then you can also use this button on the right side, no power trunk for the Camry, but very easy to open up. You have the ability to fold down the back seats, which is nice, spare tires under the floor there. So you have a good bit of storage, especially being able to put in some longer items there. Now there's no grab handle or anything, so you just have to grab somewhere on the trunk lid to close that up. And then over on the Lexus, some more chrome accents in the back. There's the backup camera, all the sensors. There's chrome for the surrounds. Those are not the actual exhaust tip, but give it a nice look. The Lexus though has the hands-free option. So you can just kick somewhere underneath it and it's worked every time I've tried it today. So very helpful to see that power trunk, of course. Now with the Lexus, you cannot fold down the back seats. So you just have that cutout right there. And as you can tell, it's pretty large even without it. So you can still fit in a lot of items and then just use that button up top to close it. So let's work our way to the interior now where this is going to vary. You can lock it on like this from all four door handles as well. But this is a really nice interior for this model with the wood trim accents, all the white leather there. And then at five foot 10, I have a good bit of space. There's storage pockets, you have auxiliaries, climates, a small bump in the middle for your middle seat passengers there. But as far as headroom goes, maybe a half inch or so above my head. I'm just touching if I extend all the way up. So it's not bad, it's roomy if you are not much taller than I am. Right in the middle, you get the armrest with cup holders and then the lockable door to gain access into the trunk there. And then you have a pretty thin pillar there 
It's easy to see all around though, which is nice. Very easy to enter and exit as well. Over on the Camry, you can't lock and unlock it from the back door handle. So it is missing that. And then interior again is going to differ just depending on your preference. So this one has the solid red, which is nice. But at my same height here, still plenty of room, about the same bulge in the middle. We have auxiliaries, climate vents there. You have the storage pockets. And then I'd say about the same amount of headroom. So very identical in the back seat space here. Right in the middle, you only have the cup holders there, no cutout for that middle seat there. A little bit bigger of a pillar here though to look out of and look around. But let's work our way to the fronts now. So this model has the side mirror adjustments, your window controls, that is it for the door there. And then we have the power seats up front. Now I have full detailed reviews of this exact Camry and that exact ES350. So I'm going to go through this quickly, take a look at those full detailed reviews if you would like to. We have the paddle shifters, cruise distance pacing, all of your audio adjustments. And then for the gauge cluster, you can go through these three different settings that are each customizable. So you can pull up a lot of information, which is nice. Everything else is fixed aside from the info within those three settings there. You have the 360 camera button. So you can go through that camera system. You have a few other adjustments here. Head up display as well. And then a very large infotainment system. You have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So you can view your phone, go through all of those settings as well as all these general settings as needed. You get heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel as well, auxiliaries, wireless charging. You get the good backup camera with those graphics there as well as the forward facing camera. Even three different driving modes, eco normal sport. I guess the fourth one is the EV mode. So you can just use that if you would like to. You have storage in the glove box there, garage door buttons, and then that full moon roof. And then here's a look at visibility from the driver's seat with the thin pillars in the back there. So overall, it's a nice interior. The layout is very nice as well. So you can clearly go through all of the information provided. Now, as we work our way to the Lexus, this has memory seating adjustments. So that's added as well as the power folding side mirrors and then a little bit of storage down below there. And then for this interior, it's kind of similar, very similar layout. We have the paddle shifters, same controls on the right side there, as well as on the left side too. So nearly identical. If you are looking to switch, you're not really changing much. However, for this gauge cluster, it's not fully digital. So you just have some information on this left side to go through. Everything else is fixed. You have a little bit of storage, however, on this left side. No head-up display for this model, but you have the driving mode stock up top as well. So you can go into sport, eco, and normal. Traction controls on this left side. And then take a look at this. We have a smaller screen, a lot of blank space on both sides. There's a clock here, which I feel I could go in a different location to give you a larger screen, but nearly identical to the camera here, just significantly smaller. You still have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. We have all the climate adjustments underneath that, some radio controls, heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, your e-brake there, some auxiliaries too. Let's take a look at the backup camera. You still have good graphics, but it is much smaller. And then we have wireless charging. You have the armrest that opens up both ways here. Glove box has probably about the same amount of space, same rear view mirror with the garage door buttons. And then we just have the sunroof for this model here. And then a look at visibility for this vehicle, about the same. And there's really some minor differences between both of the driver visibilities, just with the exterior designs of these. But there's a look at the exterior as well as the interior for both of these models. Let's go ahead and get them out on the road and see how they compare. And as we set off behind the wheel now for the Lexus, we'll go into second gear. Here we go. Power seems really good. That was just a mild acceleration there, but we definitely have plenty of power. It's not a loud vehicle either, which is nice. But if you want to use the paddles, you have them when needed. But the, the Lexus is a great option. This is something that is a little bit more expensive across all of the trim levels versus the Camry. 
Uh, but you do have some nice materials. It's interesting to know some of the features that are missing on the Lexus versus what you can get on the Camry. And with the Avalon no longer being made, this is basically the next step up. With a little bit nicer materials, it's very hard to tell the difference, especially back to back with two premium models for today's video, but nearly identical, uh, which is interesting. But now that we have the, the only option for the NAV6 is with the Lexus, if you want a little bit more, I would say of the reliability, something that has been proven, this is a great option to go with versus the hybrid system. But Lexus and Toyota do offer hybrids that are reliable. So mainly just depends on what your, your preference is with both of those. But this is a great option. It drives very nice. It's comfortable, smooth. It's what you would expect from a Lexus model. And let's give it another acceleration here, just in the normal setting. where we can get up to speed just fine. Visibility is great out of the front as well, and it's just a nice option to go with. But now let's hop into the Camry. And behind the wheel now for the Camry, we'll give it a slight acceleration here, where we have a pretty good amount of power, I will say, for the smaller hybrid engine. You get a little bit better sound in that V6, and it is a quicker vehicle in general, but behind the wheel of the Camry now. Honestly, you really can't go wrong with either model. Like I mentioned earlier, the Toyota Avalon is no longer available for the 25 year model. So that has been discontinued. That was essentially a little bit larger than the Camry. So if you were looking for something a little bit bigger, that was the option that you go with. Now that that's discontinued, basically you can swap over to Lexus, which is essentially a Toyota. It's going to be similar to the Avalon with the ES version. But honestly, I think you get a better deal with the Camry. You get the larger screen, you have a lot more uh, information that you can go over, a lot of creature comforts. Personally, I'd probably go with the Toyota versus the Lexus, but it really just depends on what you're looking for. This digital gauge cluster I know can be a deterrent for some buyers who just want that kind of old school feel, and the Lexus definitely gives you that. Uh, but the, the Toyota here, is very nice. It's an expensive Camry, but with all of the options and features that you get, I think the price is, is definitely justifiable. You're almost getting a luxury version with the Camry from a Toyota for that price point. So it's not really all that bad when you look at the overall package. And you're really going to get a similar drive and feel between both of these vehicles. So they're not so different that one is is better than the other. They're just both really nice daily driving family style sedans that give you a good bit. If you want maybe a little bit more old school, go with the Lexus. If you want some of the newer technology, you'll go with the Camry here and you just have some really good options. So comment down below, let me know, would you rather take the Toyota Camry or the Lexus ES? And I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.